All right. So now I have my experiment data loaded. And you can see I have my three experiments, incipient versus control, moderate versus control, and severe versus control. I always prefer to show the data in sign fold change, so I'm going to go here to view and show a sign fold change. You can see the colors also changed, and that's because the sign fold change is a linear scale. Uh, some things I can do is right away I can sort on fold change, and I can bring the uh, most highly regulated genes to the top or the bottom and look at them. Uh, if I want, I can apply filters to that experiment data. But what I really want to do is I want to ask a couple of biological questions. I want to say, uh, I want to find the pathways that are most effective. Actually, maybe I would like to ask, what are the cellular functions in, this, in these that are most affected? And I think I'd like to look at uh, maybe moderate uh, Alzheimer's. So I'll run this. The Ariadne ontology is a gene ontology similar to the GO's gene ontology, except ours is very optimized for uh, gene expression analysis and produces very concise and less ambiguous results. So here I'm going to click Run. Okay, we can look at a couple of functional analysis and try to see what's going on. This can lend some valuable clues. Uh, but I think the next question I'd like to ask is what pathways are affected. And to do that, I will come here, and I'm looking specifically at the signaling pathways. Uh, I want to look at that in, uh, let's look at it in severe Alzheimer's. So this is applying the uh, GSE algorithm. It's implemented based on the reference algorithm published by the Broad Institute. It's uh, taking into account all the gene expression experiment. So I believe this is a nice finding. Now, we can run one other uh, analysis called the subnetwork enrichment analysis. And this is, a, is an interesting one to look at. And we'll run this one on incipient. I want to look at proteins, functional classes, and complexes that are uh, whose regulation and, and uh, promoter binding in microRNA. The algorithm looks at networks and their the effect that a regulator may have on the expression. So it looks for each gene in the experiment here. It builds a subnetwork of everything that protein or gene is known to regulate. And because the Pathway Studio ResNet database is so comprehensive the uh, effects of these are known for many of the, the genes and proteins that we would have in our experiment to identify the most implicated regulators. The regulators may be items that are measured in the experiment or just implied from the experimental data. So here I click run. Okay, that's a classic gene. Uh, the SOX4 is also a, a classic finding. Here's a microRNA. There's a nerve growth factor. I could copy these, for example, open a new pathway, or I have to resize the windows to give me a little more space. Put those genes on the pathway. I can look at what these things do now. merge the pathways together and if you believe those are the key regulators then you will have a resulting network that shows the points of regulation of the main regulators and probably in this case you want to pick all of the top ones and place a cutoff on the p-value. Okay, so I completed building the pathway. This is a fairly large complex pathway and it may look like a, a tiny picture on your screen but the point is that we can see different areas that are very interesting. These that would be the regulator that might be a important one of our important regulators and then these are all the things that it regulates and the same with all of these so these areas of dense regulation might be very interesting particularly these that join these nodes for example it might be interesting to look at these that are controlled by two major regulators now before we leap into analyzing this pathway and then there's also many tools to simplify this so you can look at it in a more careful way. I'll, I will point out one tool called this loop magnifier that allows you to move over regions and start to get a better picture of it. And if it's still too small, then you can shrink it down. The next step here is to save this pathway. OK, 
Okay. There's a automatic layouts in, in a Pathway Studio, so one I like to perform is hierarchical layout. So this probably looks no better, but uh, there's a uh, there are ways to to dress this up a little so we can try to see what's happening. And ways to stretch it up a little. Okay. Now when we look, we can kind of see tiers of regulation of cascades that come down from top level regulators. Cascade down to these at the bottom, the things regulated. So that may give us some clues as we move forward into what we want to look into.